It's biology with Mr. B. Biology with Mr. B. That's me. You. Right, that face can get. Oh, hey, cute baby. But thank you. Welcome to GCSE Science Skills, the first of several of these recordings um, on science skills and science knowledge as well that will pop up every now and again uh, for you to have a little look at how to get a little go at. My focus of this one is here, aim, how to approach an evaluate question, the command term evaluate. Now, I want to give a little bit of context as to why I'm doing this and why this is actually really, really important, not just for biology, but for your science in general and, the, and GCC exams. So I am an examiner for GCSE. So is Mrs. Bateson as well in chemistry. And between us, we have quite a significant number of years behind us of marking actual GCSEs for your exam board AQA in the summer. The questions that always frustrate me the most are the evaluate questions, because it is very clear that students know their science, have revised really well, learned their stuff, but simply because they don't know exactly how to evaluate, they actually lose most of their marks. Most evaluate questions are worth six marks, but if you don't know how to evaluate, Likely it is you're not going to get more than two marks out of six, even if your science is amazing. So I want to show you some examples, and then I'm going to give you a task to have a go at yourself. Um, and then I'll go through that task as well at the end of this. So you're going to have to pause me a little bit on. So if I wanted to evaluate having a school kitty cat that lived in the biology lab, so notice I've already got on my board, I've got three key ideas that go into my evaluation. I'm going to be writing about some pros, in this case, of having a school kitty cat living in biology. Some cons, because an evaluation should be a balanced argument. There should be some pros and some cons, some negatives, if there are any at all, about having a school kitty cat living in biology. And it should always have your own judgment, like a conclusion. With you summarising, you know, overall, I think, yes, we should or no, we shouldn't because of X, Y, Z arguments. So, in, for example, in this case, I mean, I've, I've thought these, I asked Mrs. Bateson as well. So this is a Bateson effort. A pro of having a kitty cat could be, you know, whenever you got biology, you get cat cuddles, improving student morale, making you work harder. A pro could be with the biology part would have more dead animals. So we get more opportunities to do dissections. Hence the dead bird up there. A pro could be, maybe when students do well on tests, the biology department could give you a treat of like having 10 minutes playtime with cats and maybe a room of cats or kittens. That'd be cool, wouldn't it? I'm just going to stop here because I, I appreciate this is, you know, this is a bit of a joke question, but I, I really want you to look at actually how I've written those pros. I haven't just said for a pro, cat cuddles. I've said why it's a pro. So cat cuddles may have biology. That's good. That's my pro. But then I've said why. Because it would improve student morale. Having more dead animals is, is a fact. I've, I've identified it as a pro because it means more opportunity for dissection. and Therefore, more you can learn as a student. Don't just quote the science you know. Expand it to explain to the examiner why it's a pro or why it's a con. So my cons of having a kitty cat in biology. Well, you only get the cat cuddles if the cat is in the same lab as you. So that could lead to disappointment. You could build yourself up, but then the cat's next door. You don't get a cuddle. In. All other lessons in the school will be catless, therefore making them inadequate in comparison and therefore lowering your morale in those subjects, therefore you learn less in those subjects. And of course, the cat may poop in your bag. I haven't expanded that because I think that one is self-explanatory. I guess you could expand that. Cat may poop in your bags, um, meaning you have to throw out your bag and all the work within it. Judgment. Having a school kitty will improve life at Kevix. If used as a reward, it will encourage more pupils to work hard in biology and improve their grades. So how to evaluate. 
give pros, give cons, make it balanced, and give a judgment as well. And if you've met that, if you've done that, if you've given pros, cons, and a judgment, even if your answer's a bit rubbish, you'll probably still get half marks on a six marker, three or four marks. And you may not know this, but in higher tier GCC science papers, half marks, 50%, it's about a grade seven, just underneath a grade seven, which is pretty damn good. So another type of evaluation is when we are evaluating between two different things. You still have to give pros, you still have to give cons, and you still have to give a judgment, but every point you make has to have a direct comparison. So evaluating between two things is actually much harder because you have to give your pro, give your con, give your judgment, and make comparisons the entire time. So I want you to watch this video of my two cats when they were two of my cats when they were kittens. And I want you to evaluate which one you think is smart. Cobra Kai is propelled into a new era. Gani invents Olia, the first ammonia-free permanent home hair color powered by. It's rising. I'm still waiting for the money from you've been framed for that one. So these two cats, by the way, uh, this one on the left, this is my, this is a girl cat called Ginny. This is our boy cat called Pod. And this is very typical of their behaviour. Um, Ginny would sit back and Pod would investigate and do stupid things. They are, by the way, if you can't tell, they are actually chasing a hamster. Hamster was called Mr. Fluffy. Rest in peace, Mr. Fluffy. So in terms of this evaluation, which cat is the smartest? So I need to, yes, give pros, give cons, but I also need a judgment. So I'm going to give a pro that Ginny's the smartest because she doesn't risk any injury by falling off the table compared to Pod, who does. I'm going to give a, a pro for Pod now, which therefore is a con for Ginny. You know, this, you know the same thing. So Pod is the smartest because he's more likely to catch and eat the hamster. Ginny's more likely to starve. I also think Pod might be the smartest because he shows resilience by getting up and trying again. And Ginny does not show that in the video. So again, look at my three points. I have pros for Ginny. I have cons for Ginny. I have pros for Pod. I have cons for Pod. Give a judgment. Overall, though, I think Ginny's the smartest because whilst Pod shows positive traits such as resilience by getting up and trying again, Ginny didn't need to show this as she wasn't daft enough to fall off to begin with. Pros, cons, with direct comparisons, because I'm comparing, evaluating between two things, two, in this case, two cats, and a judgment, and you run to a winner. If you forget the judgment, like literally, if you writ, wrote those three sentences beautifully, just like I did, and if you didn't have the judgment, you're only going to get a maximum of, if you're lucky, four marks. If you're unlucky and the mark scheme's a bit harsh, Two marks out of six. If you only say positive things about Ginny, so nothing positive about Pod, again, you're limited to four marks, maybe limited to two. You have to follow your rules. But now it's your turn. Now, I pre completely appreciate some of you may not have done the topic on cell division and stem cells. Certainly, if you're watching this at the start of year nine, you won't have done. But that's why I've given all the information in the pros at the top. I'm not going to read it. And I want you to evaluate the use of stem cells from embryos, which is the first paragraph, compared to using adult stem cells, which is the second paragraph. Because you're evaluating the use of stem cells from embryos, I need you to treat your answers if you're giving pros for embryos compared to adults, and then cons for embryos compared to adults, and a judgment at the end. Likelihood is it probably will take you between six and ten minutes if you're going to think about this. So pause this video, have a go at writing this, either as bullet points or full prose, whatever you're comfortable with, and then press play and I'll go through how you could have.
Okay, here we go. How do we answer this question? So the first thing to look at is pros of embryo stem cells. So let's go, go back. Stem cells collect from early embryos. These stem cells have not begun to differentiate, so they could be used to produce any kind of cell. If you look at the adult stem cells, mainly differentiate to form blood cells. Not any type of cell, only blood. So an advantage of embryos could be embryo stem cells can be used to produce any kind of cell. I'm just going to stop there for a second. If that's all you wrote, if you have only wrote that, I mean, you've not written anything to expand it, you're going to get no credit and no marks here. Nothing. Copying information is not evaluating. Copying information does not get credit. Expand it. Explain why it's a pro. Explain why it's a con. So in this case, embryo stem cells can be used to produce any kind of cell. That's a pro. So if you can make any type of cell, those cells can be used to treat a wide variety of conditions. Adult stem cells can become blood cells, so won't be able to treat as many conditions. There's my comparison. Embryo pro. Embryo stem cells are painless to use, whereas getting adult stem cells can be very painful, which, which could lead to some people not wanting to donate. Let's see where that came from. There wasn't anything about it being painless here. So that's new information I've put in. So that is going to get credit if you said it's going to be painless. But in the adult stem cells, it says operation is simple but may be painful. So we know adult stem cells are painful. Getting embryonic stem cells isn't going to be painful, guys, because ultimately embryos haven't got any, well, embryos can't feel pain. And for those that think, well, maybe they can't. No, no, they, they can't. They haven't got a developed nervous system yet if you're an embryo. If you're an embryo, we don't, don't think of it like a fully formed fetus. This is before it has any organs, before it has a brain or anything like that. We're talking a ball of cells, nothing more. Embryo cons. Here's the big one. Embryonic stem cells are from embryos. Adult stem cells are from your bone marrow. If you take an embryo stem cell, you could kill the embryo. Kill it remove its chance of becoming a human being. Some people consider that murder. Not all, but some do. But taking adult stem cells is, you know, it's, it's a painful operation, but it's simple. And it's not going to cause any long-term harm. But again, look what I've done. I've took the information available, knowing one's from an embryo, one's from an adult, and I've expanded that to explain why using embryo could be bad, because it could destroy that embryo. And then I've compared it to adult stem cells, which wouldn't destroy the embryo, which wouldn't destroy the, the adult. It says, it, again, in both paragraphs, that embryo stem cells are untried and tested like new, whereas adult stem cells they've said have been doing for a while. So again, how do I not just copy that? How do I make it actually so it's useful? So if using embryo stem cells is untested, it might not work. Was using adult stem cells is tested and therefore more likely to work. Now, my final point, I'm not going to, actually, I'm not going to get from the information. My final point is again just appreciating embryo versus adult. You can ask an adult, they can give written verbal permission to have an injection. They know the risks, they know the consequences. You can't ask the embryo. You can't ask, they can't say, yeah, you are, you can, you can take one of my cells, it'll be fine. They can't give consent, and therefore it's not their choice. Whether if something goes wrong, it wasn't their choice. Can't give consent. Judgment. It literally does not matter what you write. Whether you write the embryo link or better or worse, it does not matter as long as you have it. So I've gone for, overall, I think using adult stem cells is better, as although you can't treat as many conditions, you do not risk harming a life. That's a simple enough judgment in favour of adult stem cells. But it's just as easy to do one for embryo. I think embryo stem cells are better because you can treat every condition, whereas adult stem cells, you can only treat a few. Something along those lines. So, ladies and gents, thank you very, 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 very much for everyone watching this in your own time. Um, that you are awesome and you should feel awesome. You are literally, you can literally show this part of the video now to your parents or whoever's looking after you. 
if they have watched this video and they have took part and they've got a nice answer, which they've, they've now probably green pen and annotated, they deserve cake or chocolate or something nice. OK, make it happen, please, parent, um, guardian, make it happen. They deserve it. Thank you very much. See you again soon.